Nationally, the country faces a shortage of professionals in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM. This is a challenge in the Baltimore, Washington region because of the high concentration of STEM businesses and the proximity to government agencies. What is Howard Community College doing to meet this challenge? Find out as we explore STEM in this episode of Pathways. Welcome to Pathways. I'm Dr. Kate Hetherington, president of Howard Community College. Engineers, scientists, cybersecurity, and other STEM professionals are in demand locally and around the country. Community colleges are pivotal partners in the STEM pipeline, preparing students for careers or for transfer. At Howard Community College, students have excellent faculty and academics that keep pace with industry needs. For years, this winning formula still needed one critical element, a state-of-the-art building. Open just in time for summer 2017 classes, the new Science, Engineering, and Technology building will encourage discovery and feature innovative spaces. At Four Stories High, the new Science, Engineering, and Technology building inspires students as soon as they enter the main hallway. A large glass wall showcases the names of world-class scientists throughout history. Further inside, classrooms and laboratory spaces, study areas, and meeting rooms invite students and faculty to collaborate inside and outside of class. We wanted to create a space where students wanted to linger, to meet outside of class, to be together. We have student study rooms for students to just join together in a, in a group and with technology and whiteboards so they can go in there and work together. And then the classrooms uh, and, the, and the laboratory spaces are all designed to be interactive and collaborative and to be flexible so that we can change the configurations based on what the instructor's plan is for that particular day. With these new spaces, faculty are transforming how they teach and students are becoming more involved in their learning. We find that students learn better when they are given an opportunity to take those things and apply them to real problems, the kinds of problems they're going to face in the workforce or in graduate school. One of the other things we're doing is trying to do projects for other departments in the SET division. So right now we're actually doing a project where we're designing a um, gyroscopic bike wheel demonstration for a physics professor. In the cybersecurity area, there are dedicated laboratories and workrooms designed to offer students hands-on training. Students will have access to a lot more equipment, um, servers, switches, routers, and also hardware that they can actually physically work with, which is lacking and in the industry. That's what they'll need to have. So that will be our advantage over other colleges is that we'll have access to a lot more hardware for them to work on. Other features of the building are the two-story engineering build room and the physics drop zone, where students can toss an object from 40 feet and take measurements to calculate velocity at varying levels. So the drop zone, um, which I think be used by probably mostly physics and engineering, we can use for um, coefficient of restitution, like bouncing tests or um, like designing like egg drop tests or things like that. Um, in the engineering lab in particular, um, it's a, just a large open space with like a 40 foot ceiling, um, a garage door so you can drive a vehicle into that space if we wanted to work on an engine. In that big build room, there's also a crane so we can lift up to, I think, three tons. Most importantly, the building's classrooms and labs offer students the hands-on learning needed to succeed in today's workforce, as well as the workforce of the future. I have to say that I've always prided our faculty on having a very active laboratory program, a very hands-on laboratory program, but you know, there are times when you want to do a particular experiment with your students and you just don't have the refrigerated centrifuge that you need, or you don't have the sequencer that you need, or you don't have a fluorescence microscope, but we have those things now. So I just say the sky's the limit. I'm joined now in studio by Patty Turner, Dean of Science, Engineering, and Technology, and Will Strawby, Associate Professor of Biology. Patty, the building is transforming education at the college. Can you explain the difference it's making here at HCC? Well, this building was clearly designed with students in mind, and I like to say that that experience begins when you walk in the door. When you walk in the door, there's a learning commons for students to use collaboratively or individually. Um, they'll have access to library resources and to instructional technology so that they can work on their projects and their research. 
Um, the classrooms have been designed also to allow faculty to kind of align their teaching practices with how we know students learn, how everybody learns. In, in the classroom, there is no podium. You know, unlike what we experienced when we were in school, we all stared at the front of the room. There is no front of the room. The front of the room is everywhere. Um, the classrooms are flexible. Um, they're designed to, uh, to adapt to whatever the instructor has in mind on a particular day. Students work individually. They work together on a variety of projects and tasks related to their course. The laboratories are designed the same way. Um, they, again, no front of the room. They're student-centered. A lot of exciting things are happening. A lot mm -hmm. of thought went into this whole process of making sure we had the best environment for students to learn. Absolutely, and in addition to doubling our space so that we can expand our programs, we're going to be able to offer new programs and new experiences for students because we have some new facilities. Um, for example, a greenhouse to support our, our plant biology program. Um, we have an observation deck so that astronomy students and the public can come in and, and sky watch. Well, if you weren't thinking about going to college, this is certainly the time, especially if you want to be a STEM major, to come to HCC. Absolutely. Yes. Now, Will, how is this changing the way you teach? Well, our classrooms are remarkably <coughs> different than they used to be. They're big, they're opening, they're welcoming, uh, they're brightly colored, uh, but they're also very flexible. Um, as Patty says, there's no front to the room, so we have to figure out how we're going to use that. They're also chock full of technology, so we have now the opportunity to present a variety of different formats for our students and really enhance the presentations that, that we offer. So I know undergraduate research is important to, to both of you, mm -hmm. and um, most people don't think of undergraduate research as happening during your freshman or sophomore year. So, well, you want to start off by telling us how that is incorporated into the, the uh, teaching and learning environment that we have at the college? Well, so science, you know, is, is an act. It's a verb. Um, and doing science is so important to really appreciate what science is all about. Uh, you know, when we lecture about science, we're really talking about the history of science. Um, and doing science is a, a totally different thing. Students that are doing science get involved. Uh, and we know from our studies, our studies that have been conducted, that students that are engaged in undergraduate research stay, uh, they get better grades, and they make more personal re relationships with the faculty. And of course, on the faculty side, a lot of us come from a research background, and it's wonderful to be able to get back into it. It's a real opportunity for us. And Patty, you had spoken to me earlier about the connection with other colleges and universities and organizations with undergraduate research. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We've been very, very fortunate to um, get the attention and the support of, of um, some partners um, at four-year institutions, University of Maryland College Park, University of Maryland Baltimore County, Towson University, um, some of our corporate um, colleagues, um, WR Grace, um, Aero Labs, um, applied Physics Lab, NIH, we had a group here on Friday, this past Friday, um, looking at our program, we're presenting our program to them. They seem very, very enthusiastic about um, supporting us in a variety of ways, whether it be, you know, our students um, transferring to four-year schools and, and bringing their research with them, um, collaborating with us on various projects. Um, so we're, we're, we're very grateful to have that level of support, and, and I think that's um, kind of a, a testament to the good work that the faculty and the students are doing here. Well, you know, our mission is providing pathways to success. Mm -hmm. And certainly with the good work that you and the rest of the faculty are doing in this wonderful new facility, uh, you can't but be on a pathway to success. So Indeed. I want to thank you both for being here today. Appreciate your time. And thank you for the tremendous contribution that you're making to the students of Howard Community College. Well, thank you for the thank opportunity. You too. Yes. With scholarship support from the National Science Foundation, students are engaging with hands-on research in their first and second years at the college. We'll take a closer look at the research of one student and her faculty mentor. More introductory astronomy students. For student Kathleen Hamilton, the opportunity to do research is a dream come true. Well, I've always been interested in the sciences. My parents actually met at a talk by Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. So some of my earliest memories are watching Star Trek. And as you can see, I really, really want to be a science researcher. Through a National Science Foundation grant, Kathleen paired with Dr. Alex Barr, assistant professor of physics. Students are coming away with uh, sort of very concrete experiences of 
assessing whether their answer and their process really makes sense, uh, as well as sort of practical skills of computer programming, working in the machine shop, uh, doing literature reviews, how to read a scientific research article, all things that in, uh, in an internship or in a research experience after they transfer to a four-year college or go to grad school uh, that is going to give them a leg up. Working together, Kathleen and Dr. Barr are examining and okay. documenting the dynamics of the double pendulum. Uh, a single pendulum is basically a grandfather clock, and a double pendulum is you just stick a second one on the end of the first one. Uh, so it has two legs that can sort of swing independently. And so what we were doing is trying to look at how the length of the two different legs influences how quickly the pendulum becomes chaotic. And so trying to study uh, sort of the onset of this very complicated chaotic motion. As she looks back at her research experience, Kathleen knows that the benefits she gained will last far beyond Howard Community College. He's a wonderful mentor. We would meet at least once a week to go over all of our findings. And we have a three-person team. Two of them want to be engineers, and I want to be a theoretical physicist. So we did a very good division of labor where they built everything, and I just coded simulations. And I've become really good friends with a lot of the other students in the program. We give each other presentations. Yeah, it's been really fun. It's a good team building activity and a fantastic thing to put on my resume. To learn more about the new building and the academic programs at the college, visit the HCC website. Cybersecurity is an increasingly important field in today's online world. For example, some of the career opportunities were not even known a decade ago. To talk about cybersecurity education, I'm joined by Dr. Mengi Ayong, an associate professor of cybersecurity program, and Rose Valinsky, the chair of the Cyber De Technology Department. Thank you both for being here today. Mengi, it seems like you frequently hear news about businesses getting hacked or customer names being put at risk. Can you talk to us about how the cybersecurity industry is changing? Right, over the last 20 years or so, we've seen a lot of uh, advancement in the cybersecurity technology. However, uh, right from the very beginning, when the internet, the global internet has uh, started, uh, we didn't actually have security concerns because devices were communicating, uh, no one was uh, you know, involved in the hacking you know, or in the attack business. But as the technology advances and more and more people actually started to use the internet for businesses uh, like e-commerce, uh, e-business, uh, we started to see uh, people who actually are also exploiting the vulnerability of the system, the system that connects to the internet. And so therefore, we started to see a lot of uh, hackers, attackers, spammers, um, and uh, cross-site scripters, uh, all kind of attacks uh, being launched on the very technology that is serving humanity. So Rose, how are the programs in the Cyber Technology Department preparing students for rapidly changing careers in the field? The cybersecurity area is a very broad industry. So we're preparing students not only with the networking skills, but also in the area of mo mobile development, web development, Cisco, and information system assurance. Our program's designed so students can sit through industry certifications and potentially get up to four industry certifications as they finish our AA or AAS degree. Our classes have labs that not only based on uh, online environment, but also hardware and software oriented where they can get actual hands-on experience on specific hardware. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we arranging students to get internships and apprenticeships. Um, so students fully equipped once they finish our A degree or AS degree. Well, it sounds like the faculty are doing a good job of fully preparing students for careers in the field. Absolutely, and mostly we were um, excited about our open office hours where each faculty provides uh, sort of a tutoring section. In addition to that, we have tutors, peer leaders, so it's a lot of like an ecosystem around the student and um, help to start from ground zero and have a successful career. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for joining me today. You've been so informative, and I appreciate all that you do 
to help our students prepare uh, for such an exciting career. And I appreciate your dedication to our students. And thanks very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. A partnership with the Howard County Public School System is providing high school students the opportunity to get an advanced college start. The early college program lets high school students earn 30 college credits by the time they graduate from high school. Students and their parents agree the program is a smart choice. It can be daunting to start thinking about college when starting high school, but Noah Tashomi embraced the opportunity to join the early college cybersecurity program. That's kind of the field that my dad works in, and I've always like looked up to what my dad does, and I always thought it was something really cool. And me personally, I love just being able to like stop like the bad guys, you know, stop them, defend what's good, and kind of be like a good guy, almost like a superhero behind a computer. Through a partnership between Howard Community College and Howard County Public Schools, Early College offers college courses and training in the high demand fields of cybersecurity and STEM. For parents, the benefits are career exploration and the college jumpstart. We heard about the program through the guidance counselor at school. And it was at one of the back to school nights and, and they presented it to the parents. And I was intrigued because of the cybersecurity, the network security, which I thought Trevor might be interested in. We truly believe, both me and my wife, that most high school seniors are not mature enough to be on their own. So this was a good opportunity uh, for us personally. But for him too, uh, you know, getting into a hot uh, technology sector, uh, cyber security was huge. For Noah, early college has been a transition and he's had to learn to adapt to the college environment. College classes are just a lot more faster paced and a lot more independent. I mean in high school you, the teachers like they would try to make sure that everything goes well for you but in college that's your job. You have to make sure that you're there all the time, you're taking notes, you're paying attention because if you don't there's nobody else for you to do that and that's definitely different. Noah and his classmates have spent their high school senior year at Howard Community College full-time. They agree the experience has been rewarding. I really liked the experience here. I wasn't really huge on high school. It wasn't really like my, my thing. And just it's been great here because I've had a lot of support from faculty and a lot of support from all my classmates. And it's, it really makes me feel like I'm just a part of like a community. Trevor and Noah's parents are pleased with the difference early college has made in the lives of their sons. He's more mature than I ever expected him to be at this age. Uh, he, he's something about him, you know, that just makes you feel like he's, he's got it together. They have given them the tools to be confident in studying, to be confident while still living at home, um, teaching them time management. Um, there's bumps in the roads, but they have a, a support system that they can lean on that really helps them build their confidence. And so I see him adjusting much easier as he goes to a four-year school. As Trevor plans for life after high school, he feels that early college has prepared him for whatever comes next. I do have the early experience of college and it doesn't really it kind of hasn't really sunk in for me yet that I'm almost out of high school and I'm really going to the next step because with the way that everything's been set up here it just feels like just a regular day just a regular school day just going in taking my classes studying doing all my work and it's really just it's really nice because I know since I have the experience now instead of just graduating high school and going straight to a four-year I'm not going to be like pressured, I'm not going to have nervousness, and I'm not going to really feel anywhere different. I'm just going to feel like I fit in. For more about the Early College Program, visit the college website. In addition to the Early College Program, HCC offers a variety of options for high school students wanting to jumpstart their college education. Just as cyber and STEM careers are in demand, so too are careers in allied health. For example, the aging population has meant an increased need for pharmacy professionals. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, employment of pharmacy technicians is projected to grow 9% over the next 10 years. Here's more about HCC's pharmacy technician training. Growing up, Jonathan Sunday accompanied his father to the pharmacy he owned in Baltimore. Assisting his dad piqued Sunday's interest in the profession. Each day I would see my dad 
uh, go to work as a pharmacist and I said maybe this is something I want to get into because it's in the family uh, it's this the family business so I said I might want to uh, try and see what I can do. Sunday registered for the pharmacy technician course at Howard Community College. Well the course at Howard Community College is an extensive course it's a six months uh, course and um, it taught me you know a lot about drugs. We memorized the top 200 drugs in America and um, we you know examined the different um, routes that are used for these drugs. We examined um, the makeup of these drugs. We learned you know the compounding uh, formulas for these drugs. Through the course, students get hands-on experience with non-sterile compounding at Vitascript Compounding Pharmacy and Nutrition Center in Columbia. The class is taught by pharmacy owner and instructor, Dr. Lynn Schumake. Here in the pharmacy, they really need to have a hands-on. So part of the course is a lab experience where they come in, we work with um, setting up capsulations, we work with doing transdermal creams, they get to gown up, they have head covers, mask, uh, body covers, shoe covers, etc. It's really focused on sterility or at least cleanliness um, and they get a hands-on, they get to weigh, they get to, to take powders and creams and blend them together. Um, and that's a, a, a real-life experience that really solidifies the didactic information that they've been reading about. Once students complete 96 hours of theory and 160 externship hours through the course, they are eligible to sit for the National Pharmacy Technician Certification Board exam. The college has worked with the Board of Pharmacy in Maryland to um, have them accept this program um, as a means for students. Once they complete the program and pass it, then the Board of Pharmacy can issue them um, a certification and they're then certified in Maryland and they can work at any of the pharmacies. In less than a year and after a successful exam, students can qualify for a career as a pharmacy technician. Pharmacy techs are extremely important. Um, in Maryland, the Board of Pharmacy has uh, recognized and, and authorized at least two techs per pharmacist. So whether you're in a retail setting or a hospital setting or such as ours, which is custom compounding, um, the technicians are very involved um, from meeting clients, um, talking across the counter and receiving a prescription, taking in general information. They might be involved in actually putting prescriptions into a computer system. Um, they might be doing filling processes. They'll pull drugs, count them out, set them aside for the pharmacist to check. Since earning his pharmacy technician certification, Jonathan has started a new job at a business close to his heart, his father's pharmacy. Visit the college website and search Pharmacy Technician to learn more about this class. Howard Community College and a faculty artist recently won two prestigious Howie Awards from the Howard County Arts Council. The college won the Legacy in the Arts Award for its role as a cultural hub. The Howie Award for Outstanding Artists went to HCC Professor of Art Ife Gan who has been teaching at the college for over 25 years. Howard Community College and a faculty artist recently won two prestigious Howie Awards from the Howard County Arts Council. The college won the Legacy in the Arts Award for its role as a cultural hub. The Howie Award for Outstanding Artists went to HCC Professor of Art Ife Gan, who has been teaching at the college for over 25 years. Since Howard Community College opened its doors in 1970, it has been an integral part of life for Howard County residents and home to an ever-expanding arts community. Tens of thousands of county residents and visitors enjoy the art galleries and theater, music, and dance performances in the Harwitz Visual and Performing Arts Center. Enrollment in the arts has soared, and course offerings have multiplied, providing arts education for students who want to earn a degree, transfer, or enrich their lives. Among the college's talented faculty, Ife Gan, as outstanding artist, is an internationally recognized artist and curator. During his tenure at HCC, Ife has been a visiting professor at several major Chinese institutions and served as an artist in residence at the College of St. Benedict. In addition to creating his own work and teaching, Ife is a published writer. Howard Community College offers the best arts and culture, whether you are a student, an artist, or an audience member. A special thanks to the Howard County Arts Council for these honors. 
One of the shining stars within the college's arts programming is Rep Stage, a professional regional theater in residence at the college. In fact, it is the only equity theater company in residence at a community college in the country. Let's take a closer look at what the future holds. In 1991, Howard Community College's community theater was producing just one show per year, but professional actors were starting to take note. They wanted the college to have an Actors' Equity Association theater. So I made an appointment with Actors' Equity Association, the central office in New York City, because when I negotiate, I like to do it in person. So I went up there and I asked about becoming what it would take to become an equity theater. Then that's union, that's what that means. So they said to me, well, there are no equity theaters in community college. So we did become the first um, Actors Equity Association theater in residence in a community college. And we are still, 25 years later, the only um, Actors Equity Association union theater in a community college. The resulting theater is Rep Stage, a regional professional theater in residence at Howard Community College. Since opening 25 years ago, Rep Stage has received several Helen Hayes awards and close to 50 nominations for excellence in professional theater in the DC metropolitan area. Theater reviewers often list productions as top shows to see. I think audience expectations are that they're going to see really great work. Um, I'm hoping a newer expectation is they're going to see things that they're not seeing anywhere else or things that they don't need to go to New York to see because they'll be here soon. Um, besides world premieres, we've had a number of regional premieres, so local productions that are happening for the first time in this area. So people don't have to go necessarily to New York to see something new because it's going to eventually make its way to Rep Stage. A new musical just completed its world premiere at Rep Stage, Dorian's Closet, a musical based on the life of legendary female impersonator Dorian Corey, was one of Rep Stage's more ambitious projects. It's a musical interpretation of Dorian Corey's life. She was a well-known female impersonator in New York City. Um, her kind of height of her career was in the 80s and 90s, early 90s, before she passed. Um, she was a headliner at Sally's, which was a famous drag bar in the theater district. It starts with her arrival in New York and her kind of rise through the underground gay club scene and the ball scene, and then uh, it's also a murder mystery because right after she passed away, when they were cleaning out her apartment, they found a fully mummified body in her closet, which was identified. Um, they think she had the body for 10 to 15 years and moved three apartments with it. And now it's a musical. <laughs> New works such as Dorian's Closet, combined with familiar shows, are what keeps theater patrons Judy Vogel and David Glazer coming back season after season. I think most of the choices of what gets put on have been new plays, at least new to us. And occasionally there's something that we're familiar with, and that, that mix is really nice. You know, occasionally we see something that we're quite familiar with, and it's always fun. But mostly it's new stuff, which is great. To be, to have the opportunity to engage with theater that's just sort of emerging mm -hmm. out of the culture, out of these gifted writers. Dedicated to arts education, Rep Stage also offers opportunities for HCC students to engage in the work as both audience members and theater artists. Students work behind the scenes and sometimes on the stage. I think we offer an amazing opportunity. We're the only professional theater in the country in residence at a community college, and I think that's pretty fabulous. Um, and when the situation is right, we have cast students out of the theater program. Um, that doesn't happen all the time, um, but since I've been here, we've cast two current students and a recent graduate, and that's been really really wonderful. As Rep Stage looks to the future, it will continue to produce American contemporary classics as well as new works for its dedicated audiences. I would like Rep Stage to be a destination in the theater world, to know that we're here and doing things that are exciting and different and uh, that has purpose as well as being entertaining. Learn about Rep Stage at repstage.org. Well that wraps up this edition of Pathways. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.